Hello second grade. So today we are going to start um, a project with collaborating with color, but we're also going to tie in nature. And so we have a couple of learning objectives for this assignment. The first one is that we'll be able to brainstorm collaboratively multiple approaches, approaches to an art or design problem. And that we will be able to collaborate with our own natural world to observe, create, and describe our environment. So we're going to start with the color part. And you're going to get three pieces of white paper. And you need to write your name on all three. So you need to write your name three times. And the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. And then you're going to fold each one in half twice to get four boxes. So you're going to fold it in half one way with your name on the outside. And then you're going to fold it in half the other way. Okay, so we start, read the story Color Chaos, and then we um, focused on color, the color wheel, primary, secondary, and intermediate or tertiary colors. And so we're going to label each one of these boxes with a different color on the color wheel. And so we have a total of 12 boxes because there are 12 colors on the color wheel. So let's start with the first page. And we're just going to label down in the corner the first letter of the color name so that we remember where to put it. So let's do the primaries first. Red, so I put an R. Yellow and blue are the three primary colors. And I just put a little, the first letter of the color name, real small in each corner because we want this box to be painted fully and we want to be able to um, cut um, our nature shapes out of later. All right, so now we're gonna do the secondary colors. So red, yellow, and blue are the primary. The secondary colors are orange, green, and violet, also known as purple. And now we're gonna do the intermediate or tertiary colors. Intermediate are colors are colors that are mixed when you mix a primary with a secondary. So let's start with yellow, green. So I'm gonna write the, a Y and a G. And then we're going to do yellow, orange, Y and an O. And so on my last paper, red, orange, RO, red, violet, RV, blue, violet, BV, and blue, green, BG. <clears throat> so let's start with our first paper the paper that has the primary colors on it. We're gonna start with that one. So whenever we're painting, you get a blue placemat to go under your work. I'm going to give each table an egg tray of the primary and secondary colors, a water basin, and then a small plate with a sponge on it. Notice the sponge is spongy side up, not scrubby side up, spongy side up. And I want you to paint in each of these boxes with a color. So R is short for red, so you're gonna get some red on your dry paintbrush, and you're gonna paint this box red. Now you can paint over the top of the R if you want, because we don't need it anymore now that you know this is where red goes, and you're painting this in. Paint it in nice and neat. Fill in the rectangle completely. Don't leave any white paper poking through the paint. Make sure you paint it on nice and solid. You're gonna be painting the edges, so you're gonna get a lot of paint on your placemat. And that's why we have it there. Okay, so the next color is yellow. So I need to rinse my messy paintbrush off. I'm gonna use the teeth at the bottom of the water basin, rub my paintbrush across. I need to make sure all the paint is off, even if I got some paint on this gold handle that it's all off, and then I pull it across the sponge to dry it off. I don't push it, I pull it. And I'm not taking it and jamming it into the sponge because that just ruins the paintbrush. So the next color is yellow. Now I've got some red on my placemat here, so I wanna be careful not to get yellow on that red that's on the placemat. I also wanna be careful not to get yellow mixed with the red here in the middle. So be real careful as I go right along the edge and paint this in. Nice and solid again. No white paper showing. Fill in all the white areas. So now I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off. Make sure there's no paint on the gold handle. Dry it off, pull it across the sponge. And 
The last primary color is blue. So I'm gonna paint this last rectangle down here with blue. Okay, I'm finished with the blue. So I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off. Dry it off. And this box has an O in it, so it's orange. So I'm gonna paint orange in this last box. So we did the three primaries, so now we're doing our secondary colors. And orange is a secondary color. Now I wanna be careful not to get the orange mixed in with the wet blue paint here along the edge. Oh no, I dripped orange on my yellow here. But I'm just gonna leave it. I don't wanna smear it and make it worse. So I'm gonna leave those little droplets of orange on there. I was a little sloppy. So now, I put my paintbrush in the water and I'm finished with this paper so this needs to be picked up carefully and put over on the drying rack. Now I'm going to take my second paper that has the other two secondary colors on it and I'm going to paint those boxes. So I need to rinse my paintbrush off all the way, make sure there's no paint on the gold, dry off my paintbrush, and then green is next with the G. So I'm going to paint my next box green. Okay, rinse my paintbrush off, I'm finished with green. Dry it off. And the last secondary color is V for violet. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off. Oh, I've got some purple on the gold here, so I need to swish that around and get that off there. And now I'm gonna dry my paintbrush off. I don't wanna take paint that's on the gold and put it on the sponge, because then the sponge won't be clean. Okay, so now we're on to our intermediate and tertiary colors. And so the first one that I have here is yellow green. So now we have to mix. Up until now, the colors that we needed were in this tray. So now we have to make our intermediate or tertiary colors. And so now you're gonna need a mixing tray. You're gonna mix your own colors for each box. So the first, the first intermediate tertiary color that we're gonna mix is yellow green. So that means this color, we need to mix yellow and green together. So I have a nice clean paintbrush. I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm gonna get a scoop of yellow on my paintbrush and I'm gonna put it in one of these little circles here. And I'm gonna get another scoop of yellow right in the circle. And what I do is I pull this paintbrush across the edge of the uh, circle to get that paint off my paintbrush and into this where I need it. Now, I can't put this in the green and get green because we're mixing yellow and green together. So I have to rinse my paintbrush off because if I put my messy paintbrush in this green and I mix yellow in it, I'm ruining the paint for everybody at my table. And so everybody around me is not going to be very happy if I mess up the colors for them. So I'm going to dry the paintbrush off. I'm going to get a little bit of green, another one scoop of green, and this will be enough. Whenever you're mixing intermediate or tertiary colors, you need a little bit of the darker color and a lot of the, um, and more, not a lot, but a more of the lighter color. So I got one scoop of green and two scoops of yellow. And you know you've mixed this right if this green looks different than this green. So it almost looks the same, doesn't it? It's, too, it's a little too close. So I'm gonna pull my paintbrush across and get the paint out of my paintbrush. I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off. I'm gonna dry my paintbrush off, and I'm gonna get some more yellow and mix the yellow in there. All right, and then this gets painted in the yellow green box. Now, hopefully you mix enough to fill in the rectangle. You make it stretch. So, see, I don't have a lot of paint left, and my rectangle's not finished, but you can make this stretch because you've got paint inside your paintbrush that you can't see. And if you pull your paintbrush and pull this wet paint down, you can make it stretch into the rectangle to fill the rectangle. So there's my yellow green. So I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off, dry it off. And so my next intermediate or tertiary color is yellow orange. So I'm gonna get some yellow on my paintbrush. I'm gonna get three scoops this time, since I needed three for my yellow green. And I just pull it across the circle here. I didn't put it right next to the yellow green because I didn't want them to get mixed up and touch. So now I rinse my paintbrush off and I'm making yellow orange. So I need yellow and what other color? Orange. And orange is the darker color, so I only need one paintbrush bowl. And I'll mix that around. And there is my yellow orange color that looks different than that orange. And I'm gonna paint that in this box here. 
I don't want you to mix a color twice. If you, you will not run out. If you mix the way I did, three scoops of your light color and one scoop of your darker color, you'll be able to make it stretch and fit. If you feel like you need to mix some more, you need to come talk to me and I'll take a look and see what we can do. But that, that stretched really well. And remember, a lot of this paint is inside your paintbrush. You can't even see it. And if you push down and pull, that paint's going to come out of there. All right, so this goes in the bowl of water. And this paper is finished being painted. So I'm going to carefully pick this up. And I'm going to go put this on the drying rack. All right, and now for my final paper, my final four colors. And they all have to be mixed because they're all intermediate tertiary. So I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off, dry it off. The first one is red orange. So red and orange, they're pretty equal in lightness and darkness. So I think I'm going to pick orange as the lighter and get three scoops. I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off, dry my paintbrush off. The reason that you have to dry your paintbrush off between colors is because you don't want water in your paintbrush because then this paint will get all watery and runny and it won't be a nice dark color. And one scoop of red. Okay, that doesn't look like it changed much. So I'm going to do a second scoop of red. Okay, rinse my paintbrush off. Dry it off. Okay, red violet is next. Red is the lighter color. So I'm going to put three scoops of red. Rinse my paintbrush off. Dry it off. And a scoop of violet. Okay, I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off. Dry it off. Okay, and now I have blue violet. Blue and violet are pretty equal in color, but I'm going to do three scoops of violet. Actually, I think violet is the lighter color for sure. So three scoops of violet. And one scoop of blue. And mix that around. Definitely. Blue is definitely the darker, so only one scoop of blue is all that you need. All right, and the last one is blue-green. So green is the lighter color. Three scoops of green. Rinse my paintbrush off. And a scoop of blue. Okay, and there's my blue-green. So my paintbrush goes in the bowl of water. I, as a teacher, will handle the water basins and the paintbrushes. I will also handle the sponges and the pa paint um, paper plates. This paper will need to go on the drying rack. And then you're going to take this over to the sink, your mixing tray. And you're going to turn the water on, but you don't want to turn it on too hard. Turn it on just going out a little bit. And then you're going to run the water on top of this and use a sponge and clean out each section of paint. This should look, this tray should look like it did when you got it. So any paint mess that you have, you're going to run water down from the faucet on it, but not real hard, and you're going to rinse out each of the spaces. Then you're going to get a dry paper towel, not a wet one, a dry one, and you're going to wipe at your placement. Now, I'm not asking for you to clean your placemat off. I'm asking you to dry it off. This is not clean. This is messy. But I want you to dry it off so that we can put this back on the stack and the placemats don't get stuck together. Good job, second grade. All right, second grade, so now that you have all of your papers painted and the 12 colors of the color wheel, you're gonna now use these leaf patterns to trace onto the back of the colors. And there's um, a variety of different ones. Some are easier to trace and cut out and some are a little bit harder to trace and cut out, but I want you to take your time. Since this is a collaboration, it wouldn't be okay for someone to do um, real sloppy work because their sloppy work is going to go next to someone who puts a lot of effort in and that's just not fair. So we all need to put in the same amount of effort and we need to trace neatly and cut out neatly our leaves so that we can assemble our color wheel. So you can start with whatever paper you want first. 
you're going to flip it over and you want to erase your name. And just do one at a time. Don't erase all your names on all the papers first because you might not finish in the first day and so we need your names on your papers that you don't get to. So whenever you're starting a new paper, you're going to erase your name. And then cut your papers into different colors. And then you're going to flip it over on the back and trace a leaf right in the middle. And then look and see what color it is. So we can usually see our color through our paint. And you're going to write that color in the middle of the leaf that you traced and then you're going to carefully cut this out. Cut very carefully right on your pencil lines. It's okay if your pencil lines show here on the back because we're tracing on the back and you're only going to see the front. So we're not going to trace any leaves on the painted side so we have pencil lines. We're going to always do it on the back. So there's my orange leaf and then this can be recycled. Since everybody's doing this at the same time, you don't want your leaves to get mixed up with your neighbor's leaves. So you might want to keep your area nice and tidy. And so as you cut one out, you might want to recycle that and get that out of your way. Then pick a new color and a new leaf. So trace very carefully. That's why I give you these patterns. So you're going to trace around it very carefully. When you do it properly, your traced leaf should look like the leaf pattern that you traced around. And then this is the yellow, so I'm going to write Y in the middle of the leaf, and then I'm going to cut that out very carefully. So you have to cut very slowly around these more complicated leaves so that you cut them out as neatly as possible. And then I set that aside with my leaves, recycle this, get that out of the way, I'm trying to keep a very tidy work area. When you trace your leaf, it should look like the leaf that you traced around, and that looks like it. And this is my red, so I'll write an R in the middle. Okay, now I come to my next paper. I'm going to erase my name. Now this maple leaf is probably the hardest to trace and the hardest to cut out. So take your time and cut. Trace slowly and cut slowly. Okay, so now I've used all these leaves, so I'm going to go back through them again, using them again, each one a second time. Okay, now I'm on my last paper.
All right, and so I've used all these leaves two times, so now I get to pick whatever two I want to do on these last two papers, whichever two that I want. Okay, so once you get all 12 of your beautiful leaves cut out, look how pretty these look all stacked together like this, so pretty. You're going to then bring them up to the whiteboard and there's gonna be a large black paper on the whiteboard. This is much smaller than what we're going to do, use. And you'll see that I have these different sections, 12 sections cut out because we're gonna create a color wheel uh, um, as a classroom. So we're gonna arrange these in the order of the color wheel. So they're gonna be labeled, and so within this pie piece is where you're gonna put red-orange. So you need to find your red-orange leaf, which is this one, and you're gonna put that in the section. You'll put a frame of glue on it, and you'll just glue that down to the section. And then the next one is the red leaf, so you put a frame of glue on it and glue that down. Red violet. And it makes a beautiful color wheel. Well, that's just one person's contribution. That's just my contribution. So what's great about this is then the next student is going to put their leaves in each of the sections. So we're gonna have a whole row of red orange and a whole row of red and multiple leaves of this color that's been mixed to create this beautiful color wheel, this collaboration of color and collaboration of nature, using these nature shapes and the colors and collaborating as a class to create one large class color wheel. And that's how you create with, you collaborate with nature and with color. Good job, second grade.